What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be showing y'all how to speed rep in DaVinci Resolve. If y'all didn't know, I am a student creative for the University of Houston. That being said, I do deal with a lot of sports videos and photos. Now speed repping isn't necessarily only for sports, but that's what I'm going to be showing in this example. Hold on, I forgot to put my glasses on. Gotta look all smart and shit. That's better. Now back to what I was saying, speed ramping isn't only a sports edit. Now if you're confused by what I mean, you've probably seen a lot of people do it in their basketball edits. They'll either start at full speed and then slow down on the dunk, or they might slow down on the layup, or you know, vice versa, whatever. Now that being said, I am going to be using a basketball clip for this example. Before I get into that, a lot of softwares do have different methods of doing this, and I don't really know how it's done in Premiere Pro. I do know how it's done in Final Cut, but it's gonna be completely different for DaVinci. In my opinion, DaVinci has one of the easiest ways to speed ramp other than maybe Final Cut Pro, but I haven't done it in Final Cut Pro in a while, so I honestly don't remember. That being said, let's get Get into the tutorial so as you can tell i am wearing a different outfit i had to re-record this entire tutorial because the audio in the actual streamlabs recording did not want to output properly so now i have to redo everything so you can actually hear the audio i thought about just bsing it you know and just not putting the audio but i realized like the audio is kind of essential to slowing down videos so we're gonna go with it and just redo everything one more thing before we get into it i did just buy a ninja v5 monitor if you see me looking off this way that's what it's looking at now instead of looking at the monitor up here if you want a review of this monitor for some reason just comment down below and maybe I'll do something to the best of my knowledge I actually don't know shit about this monitor but I just know I have to buy an SSD to record 4k so this is probably a 1080 and I have to record 4k with an SSD on the actual monitor and not the camera it's weird but yeah I, I have to get into that later if another video if y'all want that but yeah now we can get the tutorial I am tired as fuck it is like 1 a.m. in the morning and I have class in the afternoon so yeah let's get this tutorial done with so obviously first step is you want to input your footage into your timeline and now we're gonna start looking through the video clip and determine where we're gonna wanna start the speed point and end the speed point. Speed points are basically two points in the video clip that are gonna be adjusted in between. So whatever's in between can be either slowed down or sped up. So another thing about speed points in a clip is that you're not only limited to two speed points, you can actually add multiple speed points within the clip in different parts of it. So let's say you wanna slow down one part and slow down the other, you can do that. And I will show you how to do that after I show you how to slow down one part first. So let's go ahead and watch this video clip and determine where we're gonna slow it down and where we're gonna speed it up. Nice little dunk by Ramon Walker Jr. After watching the video clip, there were two areas that we could slow down and I feel like would look really good if we did. Those being the actual dunk itself. It'll actually be right here so we could slow down him catching the ball and dunking it. So we're gonna go ahead and mark that clip. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just mark with an M. Obviously this mark isn't permanent. It could be adjusted. It's just to show where I wanna slow it down. And I wanna slow it down right about when he lands. So probably about right there. And let's go down further in the clip to where they chest bump. So they start the chest bump right here. Let's go back a few frames, press M just to get an idea of where we wanna mark. And then go to the end of it, probably about right there. So obviously these are gonna move after we speed ramp, but you know, it's okay. We know we're gonna mark anyway, so it, it doesn't matter. So after you find out where you're gonna wanna mark, go ahead and select the clip and press Command R or Control R if you're on PC. You can tell it added these little blue arrows going to the right. That just shows that it's at full speed. So what I'm gonna do is click the little black drop down arrow and click add speed point. So as you can tell, it added two sections of full speed clips. So after it's split, you can actually go to the other marker and then click the little drop down arrow again and add another speed point. So now you can tell it divided it into three different sections. So we're not gonna worry about the section in front or the section behind, we're just gonna worry about what's in the middle for now. So what we can do is actually click the drop down arrow, click change speed and go down to let's say 50 percent since this was shot at 120. now the markers didn't move but that's okay like i said we know we're going to slow down anyway so we don't have to really worry about that so let's let it play out and i don't like how he drags a little bit too long after the dunk so i'm going to just go right here right after the dunk and let's actually just drag the bottom part down by dragging the bottom part it does allow you to adjust the actual speed ramp itself but if you drag from the top it's gonna adjust the speed of the clip. So you never really wanna drag from the top unless you're intending to do that. So let's just undo that, and now let's play it back again. Yeah, I like that a lot better. The audio sounds perfectly fine too, so that, that's gonna work out. So now after we do that, we can actually go find our second part where they're gonna chest bump. So let's go over a few more frames. Let's go back, there we go. Go ahead and add a speed point there, let it play out, and add another speed point there. So once again, we're gonna drop down the arrow, go to change speed and go to 50%. So now we're gonna play out the full clip. Now I feel like that looks really good. You might not be able to tell, but if you look closely, it's kind of stuttery. 
on the slowdown parts. So what we can do is actually select the clip, go down to retime and scaling and click retime process and click optical flow. What I believe optical flow does is add extra frames in between and it kind of makes it look a lot smoother. I recommend I recommend using optical flow if you're gonna be slowing down stuff and you're not at the proper frame rate to slow down. It helps, you know, smooth it out and makes it look a lot for, uh, sharper and a lot cleaner. So after we added optical flow, let's go ahead and go back and replay it. As you can tell, optical flow does work and does help. So it just so happened in this circumstance that the audio didn't really get messed up. But if you do want to adjust the audio to hit like right on beat, you could always just adjust the audio on the timeline, drag it out to where, you know, he dunks, for example. And this will allow you to get the perfect timing for the reaction. Or if you want, you could have the reaction happen way after the dunk or way before. It's, it's up to you. It's all personal preference. But I, I recommend hitting it right on the dunk. So as you can tell, the waveforms do start to pick up right here, right as he's dunking. So that's perfect for whenever he dunks the reaction happens. Now, the first time I did this example, the audio was off by just a little bit. I believe the reactions are kind of like this, which still doesn't look bad. But again, if you want to hit it right on the point, you can always just drag it over, you know, make sure your audio clips extended all the way. And you might have to adjust the, the length of the video. I did cut this video down prior just so we could have a good, small, good shot clip rather than me moving after I stop recording or whatever. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you speed ramp into Venture Resolve. As you can tell, it's not that hard. It's pretty simple. You know, all you have to do is add speed points. You can adjust them in between. Nothing crazy, nothing, you know, too complicated. I hope this video did help y'all out. And I hope that if you're able to learn, you know, from me, I'm glad some of y'all are DMing me, tell me that I'm, yeah, I'm helping y'all out a lot. Even though I'm not that big, of a creator on you know this channel at least i am glad i'm able to like give you my advice and my experience now i do got some big cool projects coming up in the future maybe i'll be able to make videos on that i am going to be working an event in the future that i do want to talk about but i really don't want to announce it yet i've only told a couple people only a few people know so if you know you know but um, I do want to say, let's uh, let's get ready for the future. It's going to be fun. One more thing, if you do want to learn how I make my social media reels or like how I do my basketball reels on Instagram or, you know, YouTube shorts, just let, comment down below and I can, you know, teach you how I do that, how I, you know, my workflow. Maybe I'll do a full video on how I edit a whole entire clip or reel, I should say. I think those videos are really fun to watch, you know, just in general, whether it's something, you know, quick and easy or something more and complicated and in-depth. I think they're just fun to make in general. If you want to learn how to do it, just comment down below. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to comment or, you know, DM me and I can make videos on them just to help y'all out. But yeah, like I always say, you know, I hope this video helped you out. And if it didn't, I'm just gonna fuck myself.